Seeing the places is nice, but we only added them so that we could dive deeper into navigation and have a way of going to the details of such a place and eventually opening that booking modal. And uh, to achieve this, we need to make sure we can tap these places or we add some kind of book this place button. It's up to you what you wanna do. Uh, I want to make these items here tappable, these iron items, and here for my favorite uh, place, for my featured place, I want to add a button that uh, actually allows us to go to the details. Let's start with the button on the featured place. Here, after iron card content, but still in the iron card, so before uh, the closing tag of iron card, I'll add a new div, simple normal div, uh, with uh, text right, so that all the text is moved all the way to the right, and with some padding. And then in here, I'll add an iron button, and that iron button will get a fill mode of clear, which means it has no background and no border. I'll give it a color of primary, and uh, I want to add a router link here to go to a certain page. Now that router link will be bound dynamically because I will need to pass the ID of that place. So here we pass multiple route segments between uh, square brackets. And here um, I'll construct this in a very long way to make it really clear what our individual segments are. You could merge them all into one string here actually if you wanted to. But I'll start with a slash to have an absolute navigation because relative navigation is a bit uh, buggy at the moment still. Then places, then tabs, and I'm simply moving through all my route config, right? So I have in the app routing module, we have places. That's our first segment. And therefore here we start with an absolute, uh, with a slash for an absolute navigation. Then we go into places. That will take us, if we have a look, to the places page module. So the places module loads the places routing file. And there we have that tabs route we wanna go into. And then we want to go into discover and then here into place ID. And that is of course a dynamic segment then. So back in the discover page, we go to places, tabs, then discover. And then that dynamic segment is my place here, my loaded places, the first element and then the ID. Now let's close that button tag and restructure this across multiple lines to make it easier to read. And uh, inside of this button, I'll simply have a text of more. And of course you can have any text you want. Now, if you save that, we should have a nice button here. There it is. And if we tab it, we are indeed taken to the place detail page with no back button right now, but of course we can use the browser back button. Here, however, we don't get that nice transition. That's important to note. Because we leverage a browser feature here, uh, which is not captured by JavaScript or handled in any way. So that's nice. And that works. And actually, I think we could even do without the padding. Uh, on that div here around the button might look nicer. It definitely does in my opinion, but you can style this however you want. I will actually center this. And therefore, since we are already center all the text in the card, I just remove text right now that I think about this. But that are minor things and you can adjust this to your likings. One thing you can set when you set router link, which I haven't shown you before, is you can also set a router direction. Now that is Ionic specific, not Angular, uh, not an Angular feature. And this will give Ionic a hint whether this navigation here will be a forward navigation and therefore it should play an animation that actually adds a page to the stack and looks like you're going forward or if it should play a backward animation. So you can set this here to forward or to backward or you just leave it away and Ionic will detect it automatically, which typically works quite nice, but setting this router direction can be helpful when this is a page that might be loaded as the first page of your application where this should actually go back instead of forward. And then by setting this to backward manually would apply the right animation and uh, not play the default of uh, forward, which Ionic probably would detect if the page is loaded for the first time. We don't need it here though, that's our button. Now for the list down there, I want to navigate when we tab one of the list items. That is actually super simple to implement. On iron item, 
you can simply add router link. And of course, you could always also add a click listener and execute a method in which you then route programmatically with the injected Angular router. But here, I'll use router link. Again, this also needs to be bound to a dynamic value. And uh, this will be an array where we go to slash, slash places, tabs, discover, and then also the dynamic segment here is place because we're going through all the places and we store each place in that place variable. And then it's just place ID. And now we have the router link on the I and item. If we now let this reload, we can tap these items and the navigation works, but it's not super clear that we can tap them. And therefore Ionic gives us a little convenience feature on an I and item. You can add a special detail attribute. You don't need to pass in any value. You just add it like this. And this will render a little icon, uh, a little arrow icon that indicates that this moves you forward. Here, this little arrow on the right. And this makes it clearer that we can press this. So that is the basic forward-backward navigation implemented. Let's move on.